lovelies, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna go over how to make a mitten. Now there's only a few skills you need for a mitten is casting on and joining to go in the round, ribbing, and then the main thing is making this lovely thumb gusset and then in uh, decreases for the top of your mitten and for the top of the thumb. So first of all, we'll go over casting on stitches on double point needles. So for your mitten, first you wanna measure the circumference of your wrist and know your gauge. And so we'll measure. Okay, got our handy dandy measuring tape. So we'll measure the circumference of wrist. So mine is six inches. And then we'll need to know our gauge. So we need to know how many stitches per inch. So we'll count the little V's here. So we'll lay this down flat and we can bring this a little closer. Okay, so now we'll figure our gauge. So on the mitten that I knitted in advance, <laughs> so we're counting V's. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 10 in our two inch window, so five stitches per inch. So five times six is 30. And the one set of instructions I say, she says to do your gauge plus four, but if I do my gauge plus two, that'll give me 32 stitches, which is divisible by four. So then that means on my double point needles, my chosen method for making a mitten, I will have eight stitches on each of four needles. And it works out for my knit two purl two ribs that I want for my cuff. All right, so we're gonna cast on stitches. So when I cast on um, stitches on my DPNs to start, I cast them all on one needle and then zhuzh them around on all of the others. So we will meet you back when I've got all my stitches cast on and I show you how I rearrange them. Okay, so I've got all my stitches cast on. I used long tail cast on method. You can use your favorite cast on method. To learn how to do a long tail cast on, you can check out our long tail cast on video. There should be a link in the upper portion of your screen. Okay, so I've got my 32 stitches on one needle and I'm going to arrange them so I have eight on each of four different DPNs. So you see, I am just sliding the stitches purl-wise. So just tip to tip from one needle to the other. So I've got three, six, here seven, eight, and then slide it to the middle. Oh, and I am on, what are these? Size six double point needles. Okay, so in our mitten formula should work for any size yarn on any size needle because really it's just your gauge and then make that number divisible by four. You can add two, you can add four, you know, however you want them to fit. I like mine to be a little snug on the wrist. So five, six, seven, eight. So slide to the middle and see and it just hangs and it's not going anywhere. The bamboo DPNs are a little grippier than stainless steel ones, um, so it's nice. So then you really don't have to worry about your stitches sliding off and your needle falling out into the abyss. So here's three, four, five. Yes, you can do this on magic loop or use two circular needles instead. Three, six, seven. It's basically the same techniques. So here we go. So now I've got my stitches distributed on my needle and look, whoosh, they're totally fine. Nothing fell off. Okay, so now, see I've got my cast on edge is all in the middle, so things are not twisted. So with my fifth needle, I can now begin working in the round. So it's a little fiddly, I'm gonna pick these up, move my working yarn and the tail to the back. So, and then in our joining to work in the round video, I talk about how I like my favorite method of joining to work in the round. Everybody kind of has their own, but to see mine, you can check out our video. Okay, so I've got 
stitch number one, I've knitted, I knit with the tail and working yarn at the same time for the first few stitches. So we're gonna do knit one, or sorry, knit two, purl two ribs for a few inches until we're ready to start the hand of our mitten. All right, and we will see you back when you have your mitten cuff the length that you wish. Okay, and we're back, and I've got my mitten cuff the length that I wanted. Here's my completed mitten. So you see they are, here we go. <laughs> so you can see they are approximately the same length. Okay, so after I knitted my knit two purl two cuff, I also knitted about, an, about eight rounds of just plain stockinette. So this is to accommodate for this little space before I wanna start my thumb gusset, which is, I don't know, I guess about a little more than an inch. It's just sort of like a nice transition and then you can begin your thumb gusset here at the bottom of your thumb. So we'll be doing increases either side and then we'll put these stitches on waist yarn. We'll join and then we'll go in the round and finish out our mitten and then we'll pick up and knit out our thumb. Okay, so I've got my, I think it's about four and a half inches of cuff here and then about eight rounds of just stockinette. So that's just knits. Now I'm ready to begin my thumb gusset. So to do this, I'm gonna do directional increases. So I'm gonna have a make one right, a knit one, a make one left, and then I'm gonna put a marker. So for the make one right, lift up the bar between these next two stitches from back to front. So the short leg is in the front, and then I'm going to knit into it. Sorry, the needle's in the way. Okay, so then we'll knit into it. So that's our make one right. And then we're gonna knit one. And now, see this bar between the two stitches? Now I'm gonna pick that up from front to back. The short leg is in the back. And then I'll knit into the short leg. And that's our make one left. See the line goes a little bit to the left. This line goes a little bit to the right. So that's the beginning of our thumb gusset. So what I've been using to tell the beginning of round is the tail. So I know this tail is my beginning and end of round. And since it's at the end of a double point needle, if I were to put a stitch marker here on the end, it would just slide right off. So what's the point in that? None. But I will put a stitch marker next to my make one left. And now the rest, I'm just going to knit around plain back to the beginning. Okay, so now we're back to the beginning again and we just completed our increase round and now I'm gonna knit two, pla two rounds of just plain stockinette. So we'll have an increase and then two plain and then an increase and then two plain. So now if you are set your knitting down and you want to know if you've done an increase or not, see how it does a little crisscross under this stitch? That is your make one. And then you see a plain knitted stitch and then a little crisscross right over here. That also is your make one. So learning to read your knitting and to see the stitches and identify them can help you with all of your projects. Um, it'll help when you make a mistake and tell you which stitches go where, and it'll give you a visual cue about what you are supposed to do when you come to those stitches again. So this time we're gonna knit two rounds plain stockinette, and then we'll meet you back for another increase round, and we'll go over those directional increases one more time. Okay, and we're back. So now we're gonna do these directional increases again. So we'll have our make one right, then we're gonna knit three, so we knit to the marker and then we're gonna make one left. Okay, so make one right. If it is, um, sometimes it's real weird and fiddly to pick it up with your left hand needle. Um, so sometimes I pick it up with my right hand needle and just slap that stitch right on the left hand needle and then knit or purl into it. So the make one right, whether you're picking up with the left or the right gets picked up back to front you have your little short leg here in the front, and then we knit into the front leg. And then we take the other needle, move it out of the way, so you can see, get some yarn. And then 
it into this. Boom! And then we'll knit three. One. This is part of the fun of using double point needles. If you are out knitting in the wild, it makes you look like a magician. <laughs> and really, that's why everybody knits, right? So we look really cool. I mean, that's why I do it. So <laughs> now we're going to do our make one left. So we're picking up that bar between the two stitches. And we're picking it up, uh, yeah, front to back. Because the last one was back to front. So this is front to back. And you want to pick it up so the little short leg is in the back and we're knitting into the back leg or the back loop of the stitch. Boom! All right, we did it. Woohoo! And now we've got five stitches on our little thumb gusset. Now, I do like two rows plain, then an increase round, and I go for as many stitches around will fit around my thumb. Um, I suggest you do the same. And to make sure it's gonna fit, can slide this off a second so you can stick your little hand in here and you can kind of go okay not quite there yet uh, and then on my other thumb how many how many these did I do so or if you've got like your one two three four five I'm just counting the V's six seven eight nine ten eleven so I had 11 stitches between um, the two markers, or I had 11 stitches around for my thumb gusset. So you do as many stitches as it takes for your thumb, because your thumb might be a different size than my thumb. So if you need more than 11, then by all means, make more than 11. If you need fewer, then make fewer. So, all right, so now we did our increase round. So then we'll do two plain rounds, and we will keep going until we have our 11 thumb stitches. So between the beginning and where your marker is, there will be 11 stitches in this space. And we will see you when we get to that point. Okay, and we're back. So now I've got 11 stitches here for my thumb gusset. So I'm gonna, and I did the two plain rows after my last increase round to get these 11 stitches. So now I'm gonna put my thumb stitches on a piece of waist yarn with a tapestry needle. So here we go. And then we'll cast on an additional stitch using backward loop. And we'll continue on our circle to knit up the hand. So see, I've just put some waist yarn here. So I'm just gonna slide these on the waist yarn. And I prefer to use waist yarn over a stiff stitch holder. You know, some of the stitch holders, they look like big giant safety pins. And that's because the waist yarn is nice and flexible and it's soft. And those stitch holders can uh, on occasion cause you to have ladders in your work. And I prefer to not have ladders, so I don't use it. And waist yarn works great. And generally it's free because you almost always have like a bunch of extra yarn kicking around somewhere. Some project or other, you've got extra bits. So, and then I'm gonna tie this little bit in a knot. Bloop, so now it's secure, look. So here are my thumb stitches. So now is a good time to try on and make sure that your mitten is actually fitting and the thumb gusset comes up where you want it to go. Look, ta-da, well, I guess we can move it up here. Yeah, because here's our wrist and perfect. Okay, we can take this stitch marker off, I think. Look at that. That's gonna work. Okay, so we'll take this off. Now, we're going to continue. Take this extra yarn, shove it down in. So we're gonna continue on our way. So since we used a stitch from our needle, since we used a stitch for our thumb, we're going to create an extra stitch. So I'm just going to make a backward loop and stick it on here. See, so it goes like this. That's all there is to it. That's our extra stitch. And then with my naked needle, I can insert my needle here, 
grab my working yarn and I am ready to roll. And then I just continue knitting around in a circle. So here we go, we'll get to the end of this double point needle. So now we know before we were using our tail for our beginning end. So now we've got the beginning and end when you get to the thumb. That's our beginning and end of round. Easy peasy. <clears throat> and if you want to be very particular about it, uh, technically I suppose the stitch we just cast on should be on this needle. After you've got some fabric here, you can stick it back on this needle from this needle. It won't make that big of a difference. Okay, so now I've got a naked needle and then I'll knit these stitches. So the idea is, stick our hand back in here. So now here's our thumb. So now you wanna knit out your hand of your mitten to the tip of your finger, till it gets to the tip of your pinky. When it gets to the, your pinky, that's when we'll start doing the decreases. So I'll see you back then. Okay, and we're back. So I have my mitten done to the point where um, I wanna put my hand in and see the hand goes to the top of my pinky. So I have it to here and this is where so if I pull the thing up, so here's my mitten. So this is the point where I'm gonna start decreasing for the fingers. So let's pull this off. And for my decreases, I've got one side here where the thumb is and one side over here where the thumb is not. Um, and then here, yeah, let's put these back on four needles again. So you should have if you're doing 32 stitches like I am, uh, you'll have eight stitches on each needle, three, six, seven, eight. Um, if you're doing a different number, just make sure you've got an equal number of stitches on each of your four needles. So this where the thumb is, I'm gonna call this the beginning of my round. So for, I'm gonna do a decrease round and then a plain round. So for my decrease round, I'm gonna knit one and then I'm gonna do slip, slip, knit, knit to the end of this needle and then going to knit to the last three stitches here. I'm going to knit these two together, knit one. And then when I get to this needle, I'm going to knit one, slip, slip, knit on these two stitches, knit to the end of the needle, knit to the last three, knit two together, knit one. Okay, so let's get it together. Okay, so here we go. So our first stitch of our decrease round is plain. So the reason we don't have the decreases next to each other is so you don't get a hole. So you want to have at least one stitch between your decreases so it's nice and smooth. So that's one. So we just did slip slip knit. So and then here we'll go over that again. Put the stitches back on the needle. Okay. Here we go. So slip slip knit is you knit first stitch as if to knit, second stitch like you're going to knit it, insert my left needle into the front legs of both of those stitches, and then I knit the two of them together. And this, as you see, is a left leaning decrease. See, it leans over to the left. Now I'm going to knit to the end of this needle. Okay, so that was needle one. Now we're on needle two, and we're gonna knit to the last three stitches here. So here we go. Five. Okay, so I have three stitches left, and I'm just gonna knit those two stitches together as if they are one, and then knit this last stitch. Okay, so that's needle two. Needles three and four are gonna be the same as needles one and two. So we have our knit one, and then we're gonna slip, slip, and 
knit and then knit to the end of this needle and notice I get one naked needle go right to the next one Alrighty, and then over here, and then we're going to knit to the last three stitches. There's three, four, five. Okay, so three stitches left. Knit these two together, and see, and this is a right leaning decrease. It leans over to the right. And we're going to knit this last one. Boom, okay, so we've done our decreases. So the slip slip knits, they lean to the left, they lean this way. Knit two together, lean to the right, they go this way. So when you have them like this, it does a nice shape on our mitten. See, here's the completed one. So here's the slip slip knits over here. Here's knit two together over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a decrease every other round. So the next trip around the needles will just be plain and then we'll do a decrease. So we're gonna do that until we end up with two stitches on each of our needles and I will see you back then. Okay, so now I've got two stitches on each of my needles, so four on each side. Um, here we go. So if maybe if you started with a larger number, um, you would have a couple more stitches. I generally go with a quarter of the number of stitches that I started out with on each, um, on each side. So I started out with 32, 32 divided by four is eight. So I have eight stitches left. So that seems to be a pretty good formula. So now I've got, I rearranged my stitches so I have half of them on a back needle, half on the front needle. So I'm gonna use the Kitchener stitch to graft this shut. So we're gonna need some supplies. Okay, so here is handy dandy needle case. So here we go. So we'll pull out a tapestry needle. Look, that shows up. And I'm gonna cut a length of yarn that is three times the length of the seam I want to sew, plus a six inch tail. If you make it longer, great, but if you make it too short, oh, it's going to be really frustrating. But it's only like a few stitches, so it's not a big deal. So, all right, so we're going to thread our needle. Okay, so for Kitchener Stitch to set up, uh, normally Kitchener stitch in the front is knit off purl, purl off knit. So to start, we're going to go in, we're going to treat our tapestry needle like it's a knitting needle. So we go in as if to purl, make sure the yarn doesn't get tangled up around the back needle. And then on the back needle, we're going to go in to the stitch, oops, go into the stitch as if to knit. I'm just untangling the yarn so it doesn't get hosed up here. Then we'll go back to the front. So now we can knit off. We're gonna knit off the first stitch and we're going to purl into the second. And then in the back, we're going to purl off the first stitch and then we're going to knit into the second. and then we're gonna snug up our yarn here. So here we go. So we're going to knit off, purl, come on. Get in there and purl, there we are, purl. Okay, and then in the back, we're going to purl off and then go into the next stitch as if to knit. And we're gonna pull it snug, but not too tight, but snug. So the top should look something like that. Okay, and now we're going to knit off the next stitch and then on the front needle and then purl into the second one. And then on your back needle, we're going to purl off the first stitch without spilling the yarn. And then we're gonna knit into the second one 
sewing this up. Now we've got two stitches left, so we're going to knit off the last stitch on the front, purl off the last stitch on the back, Pull our needle all the way through, then it's got this little sticky outy bit. Not a problem. Okay, so now to get rid of that, I'm going to put my hand inside of my mitten. I'm going to take my tapestry needle and see right under here? I'm going to poke the tapestry needle in, grab it on the inside, and then I'm going to pull it. And I can pull the whole thing inside out. And pull the whole thing inside out. And push up the other little ear too. Okay, there we go. So then now we're all set. We can sew in our ends, weave in our ends. Okay, so weaving in ends, I like to sort of zigzag it around. a few bumps and we'll go up and then zigzag it here those two and then come down a little ways okay zigzagged okay so then now I'll go ahead and trim my little end this end is sewn in. All right, so we'll flip it right side out again. So now what we are going to do is now we have to pick up stitches around our thumb and in this little gap here. Okay, so we'll pull out our waist yarn. And let's see what we have here. So, and I have, I think, 11 stitches around. And we're gonna pick up some extra. So we'll pick up one, two, three on the side needles, so three here, and I'll pick up three on this side. I mean, and it doesn't really matter how many stitches you put on each one. We are going to pick up extra needles in the crack. Okay, and then I've got one, two, three, four, five stitches in the back. Actually, I could two on one or four yeah if we could do four four and three that works actually now we'll just leave it three three and five because we'll pick up extra okay and I know it's really arbitrary you just kind of do it however it seems to make sense to you okay here's one two Notice I've picked up my stitches before removing the waist yarn. Okay, so now I'm ready to remove my waist yarn. So, yes, we'll untie the knot that we put in here, or you can cut it off. I like to reuse my waist yarn, so we'll untie it. And now you can just go ahead and Pull the waist yarn out. Ta-da! Okay, so um, if you recall, also we cast on, we did add an additional stitch with the backward loop cast on here at the top of our mitten. So we're going to be picking up some extra stitches along this top. So we're going to pick up here and then we're going to pick up in this crack. So, and I like to do that with my extra the yarn I'm going to knit with because I pick up and knit. Okay, so if I start over here on this side, I know all these little needles are in the way. So you see this bar that runs between the two stitches here? A bit of fuzz from the waist yarn. So see this bar? You can see there's like a little leg of a stitch here and a little leg over here. I'm going to pick up each of these legs like that. And then I'm going to pick up this stitch here in the middle that we cast on. So pick up this here in the middle 
just like that. And then on this side, here's this bar again, this bar here between the two stitches. But I want to pick up this leg and I'm going to pick up this leg over here. So I have what looks like one, two, three, four, five extra stitches. Um, but it's okay because we will decrease them right away. All right, and I'm going to start my yarn right here with this new stitch. So, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and knit into the stitch that I picked up. And here's my yarn. Picking up stitches is always kind of fiddly. Um, so you just kind of gotta go with what you think looks good. And I pick up the extra stitches on either side of the one stitch that we added. So to in, in order to eliminate holes, make sure we're grabbing the working yarn. That's one. So this is two. This is one stitch here in the middle. And this is number three. And then we're gonna pick up here, we're gonna pick up four and five. So here's stitch number four. Stitch number five. Okay. Now this is my beginning of round. So these five stitches are what I picked up. So I'm gonna work around and when I get back here I'm gonna do a decrease. Okay, so now I'm on the last stitch of needle number th three, right? So the last stitch before our beginning of round. And what I want to do is I'm gonna put this last stitch next to my first stitch and I'm going to knit these two stitches together. And then I'm gonna knit one to these three middle stitches. And then now, I'm gonna slide the first stitch onto needle number two. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slip, slip, and knit these two together. And then I'm gonna continue around. So this is just decreasing until we get to 12 stitches. So I have three here, five in the back. I have three, six over here. So that's 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have to decrease two more stitches and we're gonna do it on this second round. And it's a little confusing, but I think it makes for a nice thumb. Okay, so then here we are again. So I now have, so this is the middle, so then here we go. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then now we've got six stitches here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, on this needle, I'm gonna knit one and then slip, slip, knit. knit one and then I'm gonna slip slip or sorry actually on this needle we're knitting the two together my bad so we've knitted one and we're going to knit two together and then we are going to do our knit one this is our stitch in the middle and we're going to do our slip slip knit. Okay, so now I have four and three and five and that makes 12 stitches. So now I'm just going to knit around in a circle um, until my thumb comes up to about here and then I'm going to, you know, comes about like up to the tip of my thumb tip 
and then we're going to start doing decreases. So let's see here. So then on this mitten, my thumb decreases start about the beginning of my thumb tip. So about halfway up my thumbnail. So I'll see you when we are halfway up our thumbnail. Okay, so now I've got my thumb at like the tip. So we're gonna do one round of decreases and then we're gonna sew her up. So the thing about like the thumb is you wanna keep trying it on until it is the right length. And then when it's about like this, so at the tip of your thumb, you're gonna, then we'll do a round of knit two togethers and then we'll sew through our last six stitches and then we'll be done, done, done. Okay, so I've got 12 stitches on my needles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to judge this. So I've got four stitches per DPN. Okay, done. So I'm going to have a round of knit two togethers. So here we go. So we're going to knit two together here. And here. Ooh. Okay, and then got two more. Bring it two together. Bring it two together. Okay, and then here's our last two decreases. We're gonna knit these two together. I dropped it. All right, well, let's pick it up. There we go. Bloop, picked it up. Okay, there we go. And we'll knit these last two together. Okay, so now we have six stitches total. So two, four, six. All right, so now I'm going to cut a length of yarn. This has to be long enough to go through those and pull tight and sew through, so that should be fine. Somewhere is my tapestry needle. Aha, here it is. So I'm gonna thread my handy dandy tapestry needle. Okay, and now I'm gonna sew through my loops. So here we go. And then turn this over. So the next two stitches, and then we've got three and four. This is like how we finished off our hat. Very similar. Okay, and then the last two stitches here are five and six. Huzzah! Okay, so we're gonna pull these tight. Okay, and then, um, I, I know, I try my stuff on all the time. So, let's stick a hand in here. A hand in here, and gonna see the top, the middle of all those stitches? I'm gonna put my needle right down in the middle of all those stitches, and I can feel it in my thumb. Pull this through, okay, and then again we're going to pull our mitten inside out so we can sew in our end on the inside. Look, and here's the end from when we picked up the stitches for our thumb. We'll move the hand out of the way, and now we can go ahead and sew in this end, we can sew in this end. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this for you. Uh, so this isn't like it's not gonna really go anywhere. I think it's pretty solid. Okay. So there's one, and then we'll zigzag it around. Two, three. Okay. This is two, and then a third zigzag. And then here is. Three. 
All right, so then we can trim this. Okay, I always leave like a little bit of an end. I mean, it's on the inside, nobody's gonna see it. So then here in the crook of your thumb, if you do have like a loose point, like see, it's kind of loose over here, or rather not loose, but it looks like a hole, you can always sew that up tighter. We'll take a moment and we'll do that now. So again, we're gonna thread our needle. Okay, and then I've got, and it is easier when you've got your hand in there because then you can see where this stuff is supposed to go. So here's this. All right, so I'm gonna sort of sew under, under here. And snug that up. sort of go under here a little bit and bring it over here a little bit boom done all right so that is not going to go anywhere so now we can trim this now all that's left is this last end we can flip this right side out and you can sew in your last one and then huzzah you've got a mitten there we go so and then down here where our join was we'll sew in our last little bit we'll sew in our last end and then we will officially be done um, okay so this is the end so when i sew in around my joins i like to do sort of invisible so i'll go like around here and then you can go down into this following stitch. And then you can do it again. You can go around here. And then you go down and do the stitch again. And it makes invisible on the edge. And then you can flip it inside out. And then you just weave in your ends on the inside. It just has to be enough so they won't come out. I mean, because the knitting is really going to hold it in place. Alrighty. And we'll trim that. And ta-da! Look, can't see it on the front. Perfect. And yay! We have our mitten is complete. So since I started out with one already made to show you how it looked, now I've got two. Yay! Okay, so that's how you make a mitten. If you have any questions, you can send us an email at lovelyyarns at gmail.com or you can comment in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and happy stitching!